This is Shigi, the Orisha of protection in the Ifa religion. And this is an African religious store. But first, let's take a step back for a second. This is the African community in Miami. Ghanaians, Nigerians, and today, we're specifically focusing on Nigerian culture at the best Nigerian restaurant in South Florida, Sherry Restaurant. Hey, Gabe. How you doing, sir? Very good. Glad you're here. Thank you so much. Let's go inside and uh, chop chop some uh, Nigerian food. Let's do it. And guys, I'm a little injured, so I got the staff today. No Hurt worries. my back, but it's all good. How are you today? Master chef. Wow, the food looks amazing. Yes. This is the best. This is the best. This is the best. This, this is, is number best. one. If you want to witness and have the flavor of Nigeria, this is the one place that you need to come to. Sherry's restaurant is the best. The who's who of Nigeria comes to this place. This is the best. And every time I have the opportunity, this is where I come to eat. There's a uh, the whole row of egushi, brokoto, fish, egusi, uh, egusi, inyong, um, amala, all those are things that are found here. The rice, uh, jollof rice. Oh, the jollof rice is the best. Yes, yes, but who yes. has the best jollof rice? Is it Ghana or is it Nigeria? It's Nigeria. They copied. <laughs> they copied. Oh, Gambia also. Well, Gambia. Gambia. Who won it this year? There was a, a world competition. I, I think it was Gambia. Gambia? Said one. That's Gambia? Yeah, said. yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we, don't, we haven't confirmed it. That's yeah. what he said. Uh, but I, I, you guys tell us. I'm prejudiced. Yeah, so I have to go with Nigeria. Yeah, Nigeria. Yeah, Nigeria Amazing. Prices. It does remind me of uh, places in Ghana. So I visited Ghana. It's yes. very similar. The cuisine is the cuisine. very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Do they have fufu? Uh, they probably do. Oh man, it'd be amazing to get her pounding some fufu. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So they also have a mini market over they here. They have a mini market of some products that you can, and look inside here, they also have products. Uh, so different herbs, spices, yeah, oils. You know, inyong, which is like pounded yam, um, atara, beans, particular beans that are, you know, uh, traditional in, in, in the diets of Yoruba. So this is David. Good morning, David. How are you? Pleasure, nice to meet you. Thanks. So, Shadi, uh, you were born in Nigeria? Yes, I was born in Nigeria. Yeah. And how long have you been here in South Florida? Almost 30 years. Now. 30 years. And why Miami? Well, I love it. I love the weather. It's like Nigeria. <laughs> it's like Nigeria, you know. And what do you cook every day and how's your day like? I, I start from 5 o'clock in the morning to start doing the cooking. And uh, I cook uh, vegetable soup, uh, goosey, okra soup, fish, you know. Jollof rice, white rice, you know, fried rice, all kind of food, you know. And there's you pepper soup, there's, you know. Pepper soup. Yeah. So a lot of goat too, right? Yes, yeah. And is it tilapia or catfish? Tilapia, catfish. Oh, you got both. White meat, yeah. Oh, that looks amazing. This one is like a, like a that's stew. Favorite. That's cow food. Too. That's cow food yes. stew? That's what he eats. That's his favorite? <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. Brokoto. Brokoto. That's, Brokoto. What, that's what they call it, Brokoto. Yes. And what part of Nigeria are you from? Lagos? Lagos, yes. Lagos. Uh, biggest speaking English city in the world. 25 million people, but they also have the biggest traffic. Yes. Uh, <laughs> they, told, they told me it's like it's part of like the experience. It's like a tourist attraction, speaking in traffic. <laughs> If you can drive in, La in Lagos, you can drive anywhere in the world, literally. Exactly. I mean, I, the other place that I thought was chaotic was Cairo, but Lagos... Another level. Another level and another stratosphere. And amazingly, no accidents. Barely you see any accidents. Wow. And it's like an ant thing. In yeah, yeah. No, I saw a video and there's a guy standing in the middle of the road and every, everybody's passing him, he didn't get hit. I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> Uh, and what do you recommend today? What do you? What should we try? Oh, we should try like a uh, fufu with a uh, goosey soup. Oh, so with you a, have fufu? Yes, with a sorted meat, you know. That's what everybody loves, actually, you know. They love it. Can we see you pounding fufu? Is that possible? You can't see it pound. We already pounded it. You already pounded it? Oh. <laughs> you know, I have a video. My best video ever from Ghana. It has like 50 million views. He's uh, a guy just... Pounding yeah, the fufu, the fufu. Okay. Yeah. But his arms, he looks like Thor. Yeah, he's like he's, Thor. He's Thor of Fufu. He's been pounding a long time. Mm -hmm. he's, he's skilled. It takes a lot of work. It's a lot of work, yeah. We yeah. use it in Ifa a lot. We have the, the odo mm -hmm. that we use to pound like... Uh, yeah. Uh, Modern pesto. From what they told me, it's just way more crowded in Nigeria. It's like 300 million people. Uh, so I think 300 ethnicities, 500 languages. They say, just like in Lagos, I'm sure it's over 20 million people that inhabit that place. And you literally feel like they're all around you. Wow. constantly moving it does from 5 20 in the morning to 11 o'clock at night it doesn't, it doesn't stop. stop 
nonstop. You'll see. You'll go to bed hearing the sound beep, 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 beep of the horns of the cars. A cane. Let's go see Shetty cooking some vegetables. All over this way. Vegetables too? Yeah. What drinks do we have here? Anything Anything from Nigeria? Yeah, we have a star. Star? Yeah, Guinness. Oh, so they always have a Guinness uh, for an extra, right? In, uh, yeah. Origin. Origin. So these are beers. You see beer. This beer, origin beer. All this one is Nigerian beers. All everything right here. Got it. Oh, and the palm juice. palm juice. The yes. palm juice. Palm juice is palm wine. Oh. But the, we call, they make it like the palm juice. Uh, we'll try this with lunch. Okay. And do, you, and do you consider yourself, because in Ghana, uh, places in this style, mm. it's called a chop bar. Is okay. this, do you have that same no, thing in Nigeria? No. They don't call it chop bar. So what do you call what do you call a restaurant in Nigeria? Buka. 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 And you told me you speak uh, Yoruba. Yoruba. Mm -hmm. Can Yoruba. you tell me everything? Yoruba. Yoruba. Yeah. Yoruba. Uh, okay. Kilofe. Kilofe. What do you want? So tell me what. Eh. Uh, emu. Kilofe. 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 Palm juice. Emu. Emu. Yeah. Is tell, that good? Is that tell, good? Tell me you want emu. You mufe emu. Mufe emu. Okay. I am gonna ask you what do you want? Kilofe. Eh. Mufe mu palm juice. Okay. Is that good? Yes. There you go. And how do you say thank you? Oshe. Oshe. Oh, I like this language. <laughs> this this reminds me of a little bit of Creole. It has some aspects of it. Fish. Yeah. You know, catfish. This is how we cook our catfish. This is um tilapia. Mm -hmm. Tilapia fish. Yeah, so this tilapia is uh, fresh water yes. uh, and it's not farmed. Most of them are like, I mean, they're farmed, but like in huge open ponds. And this is white knee fish. White knee fish? Yes. Mala. 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 <laughs> Mala. This one. I like this culture. This one is a cow foot. Yeah. This is Araba's favorite. Mm -hmm. He loves this. Yeah. I like it too. You have that big, um, also, or the Muscle, bone. No, yeah. You can suck the oh, bone wow. and everything like that. And so these have a tomato base. Tomato base. And then as we move forward, mm. this is... This is bisa leaf soup. Bisa leaf? Bisa leaf. Bisa leaf and what's bisa inside it? Bisa leaf and little meat chop. Bisa leaf like this, a lot of people like having diabetic, they don't like to eat too much like that. Mm -hmm. So they like to eat something bitter, not too sweet. Got it. You understand? Not too sweet. This is not sweet at all. It's pizza. Pizza. It looks it, like a spinach dip, but it has some meat inside. The, there's no spinach inside, but it has meat inside, yeah. but it's pizza leaf. We wash it and we. Great. Yeah. Uh -huh. And what's this? This one? is a goosey. That's a, a goosey. goosey. Yeah. A goosey is a common thing that all Americans they love it so much. And so is that corn? It's uh, not corn. What, what it's is it made from? Melon seed, the mis mel mis melon seed, seed with yeah. some green herbs uh, and spinach in there. That looks amazing. It almost looks like grits. <laughs> this is the uh, vegetable soup. Vegetable soup. Yeah, it has fish. Yeah, so chicken in there. We mix it together. So you know. we have different type of meats, you know, to serve for the customers. So they request for beef, chicken, goat meat. You understand? So mm -hmm. we put everything into one plate for them. So which is the goat? This is the goat. This is the goat here. This is the chicken right here. Got it. Because for me, the goat is the. It's gonna be the star for me. Okra. Is it okra? Yeah, okra always has that slimy consistency. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, it's good you know, though. A lot of people eat okra because some of them don't like meat. So I cook it separately without no meat. So anybody wants it, I can give it to them without no. Oh, I don't want meat, but. So it's more vegetarian. Yeah. So you at least have an option. Option, yeah. Like this one is like vegetarian too. No meat, nothing in the in you know, a And what do you call it? Just okra soup. Okra uh, soup, yes. Okra stew and a goosey are the two vegetarian options. Yes. And then over here, fish. Over there, more meats. And this one we call it ayamashe. Ayamashe. Yes, we call it ayamashe, and they also call it ofada sauce. Oh, wow. It's spicy. That one's spicy. It's spicy, but it's good. But everybody loves it. So spicy goat stew. So, yeah. And it looks so rich. Look at that yes. color. So brown. Oh, wow. Look at all the vegetables inside there. There's no vegetable. No? It's green. Oh, it looks like it's almost like eggplant. Mm -hmm. No. It reminded me of eggplant. Sorry, guys. Okay. I messed up. <laughs> That's okay. This is ofada rice. Natural rice. What, what is this one? Ofada rice. Ofada rice. Ofada so that's rice. the white rice. Yeah. That's the white rice that goes with ayamashe. With ayamashe. And over there here we have maduro, so sweet plantains, very similar to the Latin style. Mm -hmm. 
this is jollof rice. It does look different than jollof rice I saw in Ghana. Mm. And we just had some... Yeah, uh, Ghana jollof rice, they have meat, they have all kind of things in there. Yeah. But, you know, we always serve our own plate. Best jollof rice in town. Best jollof rice in town. I mean, that with the spicy goat, that's going to be beautiful. That's the best one right there. She said it's spicy. And over here we have vegetable stew, beautiful. And then I'll have a piece of the catfish. Yeah, the catfish is great. You know what I love about uh, West African food? Oh, it's so vibrant. When you see the plate, it's so colorful. The palm juice, this is traditional in all West Africa. They extract wine from the palm tree. It reminds me of like cloudy sake. Is this one strong? I have never tasted it. It's called emu, is how it's known. In, emu. In, 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 I mean, she gave me so the whole. She gave me the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, a little too so, much, bro. So, yeah, so you won't feel any pain. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> what I've heard from some folks is that you drink it and it's like a juice, and you drink it, and then all of a sudden you feel it. Radiation goes off. And I'll try it. To be honest, I'm only gonna have a sip because yes. I'm on medication yes. right now. So good. It's sweet. It's cold. So in Ghana, I mm -hmm. went to a farm because I was making my way up to Kumasi mm -hmm. from Cape Coast. We stopped at a farm. The guys were doing it right there. They were extracting. Well, uh, they were cutting, putting it in, and extracting. Excellent. Very tasty. Bon appetit, guys. Hands. Appetit. Hands for this one. I'll grab a little piece of meat right here. You know the amazing thing also? Uh, those mm -hmm. of us who were either had descendants from the Caribbean or Central or South America, all the food, where it all stems from. Africa. It's Africa. Yeah. The, the fried plantains. Exactly. It's African. But, you know, anywhere you go in Latin America, you see platanito maduros. Platanito maduros, siempre. You know, and Sin the rice like and everything else is like how everything is interconnected. Yeah. No, yeah, after, you know, the past few years, diving deeper into Caribbean, mm -hmm. uh, I went to Ghana in 2021, then I did a lot of Caribbean since. Mm -hmm. I've been to almost every country, and I've never felt the connection more than now. And now we're in Nigeria, so then I'm gonna even feel more of, of everything I've been like learning. Right, and how all those things connect. They all connect. Some of those who brought slaves over brought these type of foods from Africa with them, and then it was incorporated into like, you know, the Spaniards or the British mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And you say to yourself, well, where does it come from? And that's, to me, what's always been the fascinating thing about knowing the history of foods. The foods that are from there, um, like the collard greens, mm -hmm. that was considered food to give to the, like, to the animals. And right now... Same thing with okra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with okra. It was like, <laughs> who eats that? Yeah. And now it's a delicacy. I mean, it's, it's part of the culture and it is what it is. You know, it's, it's amazing how food and how it develops and it turns into something something else. Mm-hmm. Well, together. I'll tell you, this takes me straight back to Ghana, man. Yes. Mm. This time, I'm happy to use my hands, man. Yes. You ever seen a guy do it, it like this? It doesn't taste the same without the hands. You have hands, yes. Mmm. Dude. Did this morning, so I'm not that was amazing jollof. <laughs> the jollof? Bro, incredible. Incredible. So tasty. Like that? Oh, I love the vegetables, but the, the goat's the best, and it's spicy. Mm -hmm. Anytime you want to bring somebody here to eat authentic African food, come to this place. Mm -hmm. and There's many, but not, this is, she's yeah. the queen. She's the queen. Authentic. The queen. This is like uh, curry so goat. Knows, anytime curry goat, I bring bro. any personality from Africa or anything, this is the place. One of the things that mainly stands out of the slave trade that those who were in the slave trade, uh, the first thing they knew that they had to do in order to be able to control those slaves was to immediately take away their faith. Because the minute you have no faith, you have no hope. And when you have no hope, you are enslaved. Mm -hmm. So the great things about the Yoruba culture was their belief in Orisha. We're able to incorporate what was forced on them mm -hmm. and continue to practice their religion, like in Cuba and in Brazil. In Cuba, obviously, uh, the slave masters forced them to learn uh, or to be integrated into Catholicism, okay? Uh, a lot of times in a lot of religion, fear is used. The fear of sin and the consequences of sin and so on and so forth. You know, in order to survive, they incorporated the Catholic beliefs, and that's where they were able to take 
say like a saint, convert it and call it into Shango. You understand? Yeah. And similarities like the Virgin of Mercy or Mercedes, they called it Obatala. Why? Because it was a virgin that's dressed all in white. So that's because the slave masters would come and see them. They're like, oh, they're practicing Catholicism just in their own way. Well, there's a place in Havana, Cuba. There's a church in, uh, where there's a basilica of Santa Barbara, a uh, municipality called Paraga. Paraga. And they still have the image of the Santa Barbara there that was, and still to this day, they take it out in procession. And if you look in the back of the statue, there's a hole cut out. And what the slaves would do is that they would take the icons of Shango that they had hidden in their barracks, basically, and insert it into the statue. And then the priests, to the point so that it became like a festival or carnival atmosphere, they would let the slaves carry the, the Santa Barbara. The, you know, the town would, would you know go in the procession, but they would be beating drums. And the priests thought they were playing to the Santa Barbara, but in real life, they were playing to Shango. Incredible. And they incorporated the Spanish with the Yoruba, and to this day, that's how it's done. You understand? But they were smart enough to do that, and slave owners didn't know that they were actually still practicing their tradition. So beautiful. And up to even the early 20th century, in places like Cuba, it was against the law to practice, you know, the Santeria or their. Uh, you know, the religion of, of, of Odisha, you know, you would get arrested and who knows what else could be done to you. But they were still strong enough that it survived 400 years and continued on. We're gonna make a vegetable stew right now. Nigerian vegetable stew. There are different type of vegetable stew. You know, a lot of people do it different way, but this is what I do. There's pepper, chicken, fish. I'm putting some crayfish now. So that's Grand crayfish that's powder. Mm. Oh, that's great. Okay, so I stir it together. Oh, you see the chunkiness in the meat in there? Yeah. And then you're going to add those uh, beautiful greens. Greens inside it. So always, what I've noticed in like, especially everywhere in West Africa, they have these very, very, they're not spinach, it's a different green, but it's yes. always super, like you can tell how healthy it is just by seeing the darkness. What is it called, this one? The spinach. Oh, this is spinach. This spinach. This spinach. In, in, uh, in Africa, we have all kind of vegetable. Mm -hmm. But in America in here, we use spinach. There's spinach, there's collard greens. Collard greens, yeah. Yes, you know. A lot of collard greens in the southern United the States. States yeah. yeah. So spinach, so instead of all using the other one in Nigeria, then we'll start to use spinach and collard greens. It's going to cook down, then I'll pull the vegetable inside it and stir it, put some, some seasons some maggi to have a taste of it, you know. Right now, I'm gonna put the vegetable, stir it together. That smells amazing. You see me? And you always use palm oil, correct? Yes, we use palm oil, yeah. Yeah, it's staple in West Africa. Mm -hmm. I use palm oil and I use some vegetables uh, at times, you know. Not everybody loves palm oil. Super healthy. I see that you have Jamaican patties. Why? Because everybody asks for it. So it's just Jamaican patty is just like our own meat pie too. You know, it's like a beef. We do it like a beef, like Jamaican meat pie. And you do it from scratch right here? From scratch. Yeah? Yes. You have one? No. I do it on Friday and Saturday. Oh, so Friday, Saturday to my Jamaican audience. Friday, Saturday. Uh, okay, yeah. Do you feel like a lot of Caribbean people come eat here? Do they love Oh my God, I have the American, Caribbean, coming to it's fufu and a goosey they love it so much a lot of them comes you know they eat and you know Ghanaians, everybody yeah, yeah what's the community like here because i know in, in new york huge african community yes, yeah. but how is the african community in south florida and are there we senegalese lots of they will have a lot of culture like uh uh Egba association we have a lot of association footballs and everything you know so we have a lot of Nigerians here too. You know. Do you speak more English on a daily basis or your other, other language? I do English and my other language, both of them. Yeah, yeah. It's like me. I'm just going back and forth between two languages all day. You're in Spanish more. Yeah. Ahora estoy hablando español. Siempre, todo el día. No, no, no. 
In Miami, I can literally go the whole day and not speak English. I only speak English with this guy. Okay, so you speak Spanish all day? Eh, sí, español y italiano. Bueno, I speak Spanish mostly because everybody's Latin. I walk in any restaurant, Cubans, Cubans. Nicaraguans, uh, Argentine, it's always Spanish. Okay. And you don't speak Spanish? No, I don't. Ah! <laughs> Actually, we are so special, I don't know. But somehow, we have that, you know, image that, you know, we have to do something. When you come to America, you have to do something. You have to make yourself, you know, available for everything, you know, to make things work, yeah. you know. One thing I did learn about Nigerians is that really hardworking people, especially when you're immigrating to the United States, mm -hmm. they're all hustling in the back, doing their job, and it's a beautiful thing to see. Yeah. What are you doing, my cane? <laughs> hey, she stole my cane. <laughs> I, got th I got this in Uzbekistan. Thank you, Uzbekistan. I noticed she only carries one sauce. This one from Karib, Jamaican crushed scotch bun. Oh, oh my gosh, it smells super yes, hot. The smell of it. I mean, it's good, but I feel like... You like that? <laughs> it's good, but the scotch bonnet, you feel it every time, just a little bit. Spicy, come, come. Oh, so we're gonna try this. Better wash your hand when you finish. Yeah, because if you don't wash your hands, you touch your eyes and you <laughs> burn. Okay, I got you. Woo! <laughs> it's hot. I had just a little bit. Some hot oil. Oh my gosh, look at it. It's already starting again. Was that that moment you forgot about his bathroom? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what? I'm cured. That was hot. You like your palm wine? I love the palm wine, but I'm on medication, so I shouldn't drink anymore. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. The best aguzi in Jolof in town. Thank you. For sure. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I come back. Next time we have some palm wine together once I'm better. Okay. That's good, yeah. I promise you. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So next we're going to a botanical. Yeah, we're going to a, it's called Juliola African Market. Amazing. And all the materials that are needed for African traditional religion and then some are found. Perfect. Travels a Haiti a lot, does a lot of uh, charity work for it. Oh, beautiful. Organization, so, real good guy. Real awesome. Good guy. Well, Araba, you're gonna go? No, I'm gonna take oh, you're gonna yeah, Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah, so Sorry, I thought you told me you were no, going no, earlier. No, I just wanna show you. I told my wife if they come just to hold on this for me. Yeah. Oh, wow. I wanted me to show you around this place. Like Dude, a I have this it's from Congo. I have that one. Yeah, it's Similar, good. from Congo. Wow, oh, it's dark in here. This place here, you'll spend the whole day in. <laughs> I have a gift for you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, ah, too. No, I want to take another picture with him inside. Yeah, let's go inside. Okay. This place is beautiful. It feels like a <laughs> like a museum, man. This is a museum and then some. Oh my gosh! Mm -hmm. I'm so happy. Hello, sir. Kwame. This is Dave. Kwame. How are you? Nice to meet you. You see me? So I, I have a staff today because I messed up my back. Yeah, he told me. Yeah, this is like for me. This is heaven. I so I have my own store now with my hot sauce, mm -hmm. and I have like crafts like this and I've been bringing stuff from Congo and Ghana but you have so many mine, I, I got another one for him don't worry I'll give, I'll give you another one for you <laughs> no, I'll give him another one this is mine <laughs> that's awesome yeah so is everything from Nigeria or Jamaica? Nigeria uh, Ghana they have different Nigeria but, but mainly it's mostly Nigeria. Nigeria a little bit of mostly Nigeria yes. yeah. wow let's go look like around this one Uzbekistan really yeah so it's actually three pieces I got this in Kiva like three pieces. You just take it apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get on the plane. Very easy. Okay, okay. That's from Ghana. <gasps> and you see the symbolism of Ghana. Oh, having that height? Yes. Because this is too low. For you? For me. This is beautiful. So you've been importing for a long time? Uh, yes. Yeah? Well, not me. I'm not the owner. I'm just the guy holding down the fort while the owner is doing, you know, in Nigeria doing things. Nigeria for sure. Now. Right. But she's been importing things for... At least 20 years. More than more. that. More. Well, but since I've been coming here. Yeah, more than that. Because she was, when she was still working as a nurse, as a nurse she was yes. importing. Yes. So I would wow. say maybe 30 years altogether. Incredible. Yes. And where's she from? She's from Nigeria. Yes, sir. And you, are you from Miami? Or? I'm from New Jersey. You're from New Jersey? Yes, sir. I mean, I mean especially now. Now it's like oh, everybody's yeah. from somewhere else. Yeah. 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 I'm a native, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. We're unicorns. Three. We're, we're yeah, born here. We're born in the county of Dade. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, three people. The rest, get out of here. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking with you. Because he's the, he's the transplant right there. It's okay. Transplants are good. That's yeah, yeah, no, of course. They, they boost our economy. Yeah, yeah. We were all transplants at one point, right? Yeah, at least my parents, right? Like 25 years ago, a guy said something that really 
you know, after a while it stuck. It was Levon Hernandez, a baseball player, when the, or the Florida Marlins won the World Series the first time. He screamed, I love you, Miami! And it does stick, you know? It it, um, very few people that come here don't find something to like. You know, it's, it has something for everybody. Yeah, well, the climate. And the climate and the energy, and it's constantly evolving. So Miami, I travel to a lot of places, and when I come back home, I say, ah, I'm back yeah. in Miami. I'm home. Of course. Yeah. This is how they make fufu, just like this. Yes. And what, how they do it is, as the guy lifts and goes down, the woman turns it. Yes. So she, but she almost like loses a finger every time. It's impressive, it's a, man. Uh, it's, the, it's a dance. It's synchronized. It is a dance. Yes, it's a dance. And it's synchronized. So I'm going to see this a lot in Nigeria. And every every, highway, every corner. in the road. You go, as you're going on the highway anywhere, they'll sell them. I, I don't know mm. if you noticed in my house, I have three of them. And all of them I purchase on the side of the road. Beautiful. Uh, the only problem is bring them here. No, I know. So, I, I've yeah, been dealing with that as well. So and it's easier just case. to come here and buy it from them. Of uh, course. You can take that in your carry-on. This oh, is more palm? Story, but this is emu. Emu. This is palm wine, but the other one is juice. This one is the one that is also radioactive. This <laughs> one is radioactive. Radioactive. This, this is what we use for orisha called ogun. Okay. And we also use it for obaluaye. 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 We appease them with this. They like this very much. So they like that, yes. that nice palm, sweet, cold taste. Mm -hmm. And then they have here, like this is akara. Akara, moin moin. Yes, and akara you fry it and with uh, you make it with palm, palm oil, very tasty, and oh. people love it. Inyong, what I was eating at Sheri just now, pound and yam, inyong. Here, these are figurines of Eshu. Eshu. Eshu elegba or elegbara. Those are all different figurines of Eshu. Uh, so that's part of the religion. It's part. It's one of the, if not the, one of the most important deities in uh, Yoruba, Isheshe, Ifa, Eshu. Nothing happens without Eshu. He is the, uh, the agent, the policeman, the one that if we do sacrifice, we do a bow, he's the one that makes sure that we receive our blessings. He's the one that assures with sacrifice, there's benefits. And behind here we have forever drums, and that is the, yes. the most important feature for yes. my because that, that's how... The drums is part of communication. Like here, those are traditional Yoruba drums, bata drums, and they're the talking drums. They, uh, in Africa, it's known that you can communicate because it's, you know, Yoruba is a tonal language. And as the beat of the drums, they can actually hear and understand the language that's being spoken to those drums. Remember the game? This is the game. Remember the game I was talking to you about? That's like backgammon in a sense? Yes, yes. Oh, it's on yeah. oh, yo, See? It's from millennia. They so, had that. so this is a game that's this is game. Like backgammon. It's, it's, and they yeah, yeah they, they, have, they use some seeds and they just start shifting around. I've seen it played a hundred times, but I don't know the concept of it. But I know that backgammon is supposedly came from derived it. from this. Yeah. See? Nice. And then they go like this, and then they start eliminating and putting and changing them around, mm -hmm. and that's all. Yeah, some of these games, it's hard for me to, to comprehend. I have to like be taught. They're complex. Yeah. This is called Egugun, or the Masquerade. I don't know if you saw that in Ghana, but it's typical in Southwest Africa of veneration of the ancestors. Ancestors are, are primordial, are, are the most important thing of spirituality, African spirituality. And this is used uh, during festivals or honoring the, the ancestors and someone will be wearing this and they literally come into possession and they use that Egugun masquerade. Wow. This is figurines of Shango. This is O'Shea of Shango. Oh wow, that's beautiful. It looks like a fan. Yeah, but it's, it's used by Shango. This is a figurine of Shango. See, he has, he's holding one on his head. Mm. It's like a double-edged uh, axe he would use when he would go to war. Wow. So it became a symbol of Shango. I'm taking one of these. <laughs> 45. Yeah. 45. Also at uh, Sheri, they have the traditional uh, African dressing. Uh, some of them had different names. Like this style here is mainly used by men. It's called Agbada. Agbada. It comes, it comes in three pieces. Oh, wow. Uh, some men will throw it over their shoulders. And it's one like this, as you can see. Yeah. Very elegant, very distinguished. Very looking. nice. It looks like almost like he's going to a wedding or yeah, something. Yeah, but it's you know traditionally worn. 
Wow. You'll see people, when you go to Nigeria, you'll see them wearing in the street. It's uh, quite common. And of course, yeah. colors. Colors. No one exposes colors like Africa. No, yeah. I know. I, that's what I love about it. You walk the in, colors. it's like the, the mix of colors the is so colors. vibrant. And uh, hopefully you'll get to see the tie-dye. This is the indigo with a, a actually, there's an art nice. form to this. To, yeah, to do it. This place is Nigeria in South Florida. If anybody that's been to Nigeria, say, ah, as soon as you walk into Juliola, you know you're in Africa. And it's, it's an amazing place. And It's awesome. All the, you know. Here, coin coin that's used to bathe. All right, so this is like the uh, yeah, it's like a sponge. It's like a sponge, mm -hmm. traditional. Sponge. So it's straw. It's straw, and it's very good for your skin. Yeah, yeah. Very, very good for your skin. No, this is when you want to coin coin. This is like get out of the sauna, use this, clean up all the extra skin. The skin will Perfect. come off. They have a lot of beadwork in Nigeria, like similar to Ghana. They, there's so many beautiful crafts. The best. the best, the craftsmanship there is just. Oh, this is not a purse. I thought it was a purse. No, this is what somebody's wearing. Okay. This will be worn by any, mainly chiefs wear these, and they have their their meaning. Uh, basically, the face that's usually depicted is the face of either Eshu or Odudua. So I, I don't want to be disrespectful, mm -hmm. but that looks like Olaf. Ah, or maybe they depicted all off of exactly that. exactly you never know, you know the snowman but um oh wow look at this, this all these rocks uh, sigidi yeah that, oh wow yeah, those are that, that's where people start confusing this with witchcraft yeah it's not because it's not this this like the needles it's not that, that, that they're hurting their enemy correct it's actually it's it is mainly used as a item to in, as a guard in front of your house to keep negative energy away from you and also, people who don't know, you see that at the front door, you say, oh, I don't want to go in there, but it's, it's a protection yep. for the house. And the it's needles. usually found in front, yeah, nails or needles or whatever. Yeah, yeah, these are nails. Into it. And then, of course, there are ceremonies and things done to, to activate it. This is a rukere, it's worn, it's used by chiefs. Rukere. And chiefs, high chiefs and kings, it was used for flies, you know, the flesh yeah, yeah. water, but it's also a symbol of authority. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Anybody you see in Africa walking with one of those, they, they have a position. They have a title. It can be king. It can be Araba. It can be high chiefs. Anything like that. A prominent person, they carry those. And it's made out of? Uh, horse tail. Horse, horse tail. tail. Yes. Wow, so that's horse tail. And then, see, they, have, they use this one. This is also a typical one, but this wow. is like the more elaborate yeah. for people of certain position, high positions wow. in, in the culture. I keep seeing these chairs. This is like a very West African thing. Mm -hmm. It's like a chair. Well, or, or it, like a, it is actually the whole, like see? The whole bowls and pots, yeah. Yes, cool. it's called Ajere or Ikofasi, where the, king, the kings of Ifa are, kept, are stored. Babalaos, Yanifas, those who have Ifa, they'll use this to store their, their Ifa inside of. Just like that one behind wow. you. Wow. It can be used for Shango. So much work to make all these oh, different yes. crafts. Oh I, yes. These figures are oh, yeah, man. Yeah, beautiful. This is this is Oya, who's wife of Shango. This so all these have a meaning different, in the religion. Different meaning, yes. This is Ogun. You know, you saw that tall figure in my in my house, but this is a wooden figure of Ogun. The people who actually go up into the mountains or the place where li lightning strikes, mm -hmm. they have to go through certain rituals that I can't say, but these are people who are selected so that they're able to actually touch this at the time so that later other people will touch it. Because if you touch this, it has been known that you will go meet your maker. This stuff is called Adwara. Look at this guy. He's a beautiful spot, but we're good, right? We're yeah, not, yeah, yeah, we're no, not no, meeting no, our no, maker no, here? No, 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 not today. Not don't, today. don't scare me now. No. I, I'm, I'm on the edge, guys. I'm no, on the no, edge no. With, a, with a broken back. Believe me, they wouldn't be in here if that wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> if they would not be in here right now. There, you sell me. these, correct? Yes, you sell yes, them? yes. So it's a natural sheen on that rock. Like yes, that's mineral. from, wow. you know, the thunder yeah. and. So thunder and lightning. The lightning, yeah. I'm going to take one. I really love all the crafts here. This is one of the, the special things about West Africa is going to the markets and seeing the, the guys, the carpenters, the craftsmen making things like this. I, I had no idea it was an African market like this in Miami. 
I then went with Araba, Ifa Tokun Awolola to experience an exclusive behind the scenes look at a traditional Ifa ceremony known as Ebo. I was brought into a special room known as the Ile Ifa to experience this core Ifa divination. The ceremony of Ebo is the way they find answers or remedies to problems in their lives. This is the first Ebo of the year, which also sets the tone for the rest of the year. Ebo is a ceremony which can involve animal sacrifices, making medicines, and prayers for good outcomes. Just so you have an idea, the symbols that I'm putting here are based on a binary system. It comes from Olodumare, the creator. So you find a coded message? It's a coded, well, the, the verses is a coded message and it comes through a binary system, okay, of zeros and ones. And what I marked here would basically, if I was to put in the context of uh, mathematics, it would be one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero. So um, this is and when we translate it to Ifa, it's called Odiobe or Dibere. You understand? And then inside of that, it has a coded message that I relayed to him yesterday when we consulted Ifa. Okay? And that's what the, the uh, ceremony of, of a bowl that we're performing now is based on this. Touch your head again, three times your chest, yep. with your right hand first. And bury them inside? Yes. Place this in the position of the Odu. Odu is the sign that manifested for him. Again, I'll explain. See? One, zero, zero, one, 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 one. The only exact system, or only perfect system in the world, to me, is mathematics. It's always true. So it is not a coincidence that Olodumare gave us this instrument to use as a measure to do divination. This has 256 combinations that it can fall. Okay? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four plus four is eight. Eight plus eight is 16. 16 times 16 is 256. But he gives us something that is exact. Two and two is always four. You understand? Sure. And through this, we consult the past, the present, and the future of all things in the world and in life or whatever circumstance there is. To even add, because something that you've always said before with the binary code, like the binary system, like it literally is nature's binary system. It's you know, horrible. computers share data through ones and zeros, binary code, right? But this is nature's binary code. If we need to find what's wrong with the system right now inside of us, this binary code will give us the code that we need to find out what's wrong and how to make it better. Mm -hmm. and, and he's the, the solution he, and the solution right and he facilitates that because he's able to do the divination using these numbers and these infinite these codes. these codes these infinite combinations each coded message has limitless messages inside and it's based on the spirituality that the message will come through to the babalao to in the case of the person that's consulting once it comes out there's a spirituality that manifests, and through the knowledge of Ifa, we're able to give the person the message of Ifa. Okay, it's not like looking in a crystal ball or or looking at cards. It's based on, you know, direct information that has been passed down orally for millennia. Okay, on your bowl. This one in particular is based on Orumila and Ifa. And There's, Ifa is a title, yeah? It's Ifa is the coded message of Olodumare that we consider the coded message from God or Olodumare, the supreme being. And all the Orishas, they have different color combinations like this black and red. 
is associated with Eshu, Elegbara. Um, there's this one, the Yemaja. Uh, the yellow, also the yellow and green, is for an Orisha called Oshun. They all have different combinations of colors, and they all were sent into the world as emissaries of the Creator. They all had their function until this day. You know, we tap into their, their energy to assist us. They were brought into the world to assist human beings. You understand? This room, uh, what do you consider this? Like this is called, yeah, this is a shrine. It's called Ile Ifa. It means land of Ifa, land of Orumila. You understand? And of the Orishas that are present. So it's, it's a temple, it's a shrine, however you would like to discuss it. And this is where we, we pray, we worship, and we do all you know things that involve Ifa and Orisha. Right. <laughs> yes, and well, those are some a uh, little bit of my history through time and, uh, and Ifa. Uh, you'll see some of these things here are over 100 to 200 years, and uh, Ifa is traced back thousands and thousands of years um, to the point that. Um, you can see these articles, there's artifacts. Uh, it's considered that the Yoruba calendar right now is in the year 10,065. Oh, wow. So you're talking millennials even before the coming of Christ. So eight millennials before the coming of Christ. Wow. So, and even in Nephi, it talks about the coming of Jesus. It talks about Muhammad. It talks about everything that was coming into the world. So Nephi, not because I'm a practitioner, but it's the source. It's the source. And there are so many things that happen through Ifa that, you know, if you say it to the outside world, it's, ah, that's hocus pocus, that's, you know, it's uh, the eye of the beholder. It's something that's used to help people, but these are things that are hard to explain. Mm -hmm. You can hold it yourself. How did that get inside there? That's an interesting question. How do they put that figure in there? Because there's a guy and he looks like he has a, a big cigar. It's all through spirituality. Things that cannot be explained. Yeah, I have no idea how they put this inside here. And you can see. There's no way, there's nothing else, there's no other way. And it's not a cut bottle, it's an old liquor bottle. See, mm -hmm. look all around. Wow. Just the shape of this, how would that get in there? No idea. <laughs> Some things can't be explained. Dude, I've been coming here for a long time, I've never seen that. <laughs> and there's things that can't show you, but you would say, ha, how is it possible? Yeah. It's possible. <laughs> I think everything is possible. Everything, everything. under the sun. Yeah. Papa, take this outside also. Okay. The other day when we were in the Haitian place, we spoke about the markings on the face as the traditional tribes and stuff like that. And later on, when you film some of these statues, you'll see that the statues have the markings on their face as well to symbolize the different tribes. But all the statues in here symbolize, you know, a different deity, a different Orisha that we like to refer to. I say deity so you guys can understand, but and then they all have their different uh, beads and their different colors means different things, which uh, Araba will go into. But right now, I got to take this bow back there. So if you want to come with me. I was then led into a shed which contained the altar, which is the living manifestation of the gods of Ifa, Ogun, and Eshu. This is where the offerings from the ceremony are brought to complete the process. Where there's water, there's life. And this is a pigeon that was part of an ebo that I set free because it was not to be sacrificed, but it has remained here for over a month. Wherever there's water, there's life. Look that from, he's been fed, and look at him out. So beautiful. Just like that. And that's the food that he's left. That's why I even learned like the parrots, they are part of the ecosystem that when they eat, they throw a lot of food out. Because you'll see here, this may sound this is one of our sacred birds yeah. of our faith. You know, we have plants here that are generally only found in Africa. And I, you know, I said, well, because those things are brought by birds or even by the wind. Because people from Nigeria come here and see plants that we have here and say, ah, oh, you have this plant here? You know, so it is. Come, you see this? Plant? Let's go. He's beautiful. Giant schnauzer. I don't even remember this. Yeah, yeah. Wow. This is Eshu. And this is a representation of Orisha Ogun. You remember we talked about Ogun the other day. 
that's my uh, that's my orisha, Ogun. So this is uh, I don't know. I like to use my hip hop terms, but this is my daddy. <laughs> this, this is my daddy right here. This is Daddy Ogun, and uh, this is Eshu that you're filming down here. There's Eshu, different here. yeah, different Eshus, and and a lot of his godchildren's Eshus are here as well. Beautiful thing about these statues, even when we we're in Africa, we saw that. You know, throughout the years, these statues grow and they grow and they grow because people keep adding stuff to them. And as you add, I mean, it kind of looks like a person. It does. But it's it's not, right? It's just built up that way after so many years. It's 20 years back here, right? This guy's been here? Yeah, at least. At least 20 years, you know? Like, again, the colors and different stuff like that always symbolizes different uh, deities, but... Uh, red is one of the colors of Shango. But yeah, everything here is symbolic and everything has meaning. And a lot of this stuff's been here for a really, really, really long time. You know, minimum 20 years, probably 25. Uh, I've been coming here for about 20 years myself, so. Yeah, so this is years and years of, of adding to it and adding ceremonial materials to it. Uh, some parts, uh, cloths, different pieces of metal. Ogun was like the metal smith. Uh, he was the like creator of, of like, you know, he was like the swordsmith. He was a metal worker, metallurgy. He's an inventor of medicine. Uh, everything that, that, I don't know, you consider somebody that works with their hands. So if you look at a boom, that's why he has chains around him. He has a lot of machetes in the top. If you look at the top, his crown is all machetes. Uh, and, and yeah, after years, it just gets built up and built up. They add the, the cloth to it and it builds up. And eventually it starts to look like a guy. Wow. Uh, so imagine breaking into this house at night and coming into here thinking you're going to find a lot more. Hey Nate, um, since you went back into that room back there, I got to cut your finger because I need some of your blood for one of these sacrifices. What? Yeah. No, so, there's one. Uh, sorry. Hey, the pinky. <laughs> I just play. I just play. Excuse me, man. What? What's happening here? <laughs> oh my gosh. These are our finished bowls. Some materials in there. That homemade fermented drink that people were drinking over there that had them messed up. Ebo, ebobo? Gogoro. Gogoro. Yeah, but that's like moonshine. That's like moonshine. It is moonshine. And I could tell when the guys were drinking that stuff because their eyes got super bloodshot. It's bad. A lot of people literally die from that. I know. I imagine. L that. Liberia is going through some, some issues with uh, everybody becoming like a zombie. You know, sadly, it's escape. Yeah. Escape from reality. That's all it is. It's pure <laughs> escape from reality. And sadly, even in Ifa, it says spirits, as it's called spirits. Those are the type of spirits in excess that become enemies of human beings. Like death, sickness, loss, litigation. Those are all enemies. That's why I always tell you, pray to overcome the enemies that you can see, which are generally the ones you know, like human beings and the ones you can't see. And the ones that you can't see, you can't see death coming. Poverty, or poverty is rampant. rampant, or alcohol or drugs or whatever it is, comes into play. Sadly, that's the case. Look, Cuba is an example, a place that I told you I want to take you so you can see how things in the religion are done there, or the version that's practicing the Afro-Cuban Lukumi, Santeria, slash whatever you want to call it. Take this and pray. We call this a bowl, which in the context can be placed as sacrifice. We believe that without sacrifice, there's no benefit. To, to, to. To, to, to. Ha, 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 ha. Touch your head now three times and your chest three times. And take it to Eshu and place it in front of Eshu. Pray a minute in front of Eshu and then put it in front. Sacrifice. Um, everything that we do that we want to have a benefit requires sacrifice. Like, this may be the way you earn your, your, your pay, right? Or your income. Like the final part of the abode, we did all the ceremony and everything, so this is the Ebo for Eshu. Eshu is, uh, is this statue right here that you saw. Eshu opens the doors and closes the doors. Eshu is, uh, is many things. I, I, we'll go into more of that, but 
This is for Eshu, so what I'm going to do now is pray and put it down and leave it as an offer. Fa says, without sacrifice, there's no benefit. Then ask how many days if I meta. Seven days. Seven days. You may not have noticed, but there was leaves inside the ebo. Before we use that, we pray to that because it gives us life. Like I showed you that little seed there, what came out of it. And a little pinch of water, life, that has a spirit. And we thank that spirit. Like I could have taken that thing and chucked it. I said, no, let me let it stay there. New life came. And I told you, you have to bring plants because. Look what's happening to the world right now where we're going through this climate change in global. Why do you think it's happening? Well, Sam Eiji and Ifa says that man will be the cause of his own destruction. And they're working on it every day by not respecting what Olodumare gave us to help us live in this world. It will make the world a better place, but sadly, sadly, in a sense, it's said in Ifa, there's a term that says Ayekoto, that's what they call the African. The bird. The African, African great bird. African great bird. It means that the world doesn't want to hear the truth because the truth can be heavy for people to carry. A lie is easy because it has many variations so it doesn't have a lot of weight and people can go with it. So if I tell you don't cut the trees because it's going to benefit, it's going to give us oxygen, it's going to reduce viruses in the world. But then you're in the business of vooing furniture or in the wood business, you say, hey, what? I'm not with that. Or if I tell you, Stop taking out oil from the bottom of, uh, of the earth because it's going to cause the fracking is going to cause earthquakes like we're living today. Think about it. There's earthquakes in Oklahoma, a flatland. How do you explain that? But just go to Oklahoma and see all the fracking that's going on. Thousands and thousands of machines of fracking. 20 years ago, 25 years ago, did you ever hear the term tsunami? Because the increase in the power of earthquakes. Now a 7.5 earthquake is normal. I know. It's scary. Five, the first earthquake I had ever experienced was in Santiago, Cuba. 5.6. Dude, wow. I, I never forgot that. Imagine a seven. You know, one of the things that attracted me always to the, to the, to to, religion. To the religion, and, and apart from mine and yours, genuine friendship that we've always had, was, mm -hmm. you taught me a term. Yes. Could you explain to the people that are watching because Iwapele is really important to me, but can you explain to them what Iwapele means? Iwapele is element and translated to the context, it means good character. In Ifa, we are taught that our character is what allows blessings to come, or lack of character is what brings the strife, the, the punishments, the turmoils that we live through, okay? The first thing that Ifa tells us that we should have always is patience. Sure. Where Ifa says a patient man becomes, ki becomes king or a patient woman becomes queen. Patience and wisdom are the first things I always tell you we should ask our OD, our destiny to give us daily. Because two of the most important things, if we have wisdom and we have patience, it will generally get us through the day. You understand? Lack of patience can literally cost you your life. People who are driving in the street, they don't have patience, they want to go 100 miles an hour, boom, what happens? Accident. You overreact, you lose patience, and you can attack somebody. But you need to have the patience to wait and see what's going on. The other thing that Ifa tells us, to use common sense, to be tolerant, to be humble. Those are all elements that we have to pray and work on on a daily basis. Because Ifa even tells us that your religious practice in the eyes of the Creator mean nothing. The only thing that will be judged is your character. Because your character, when you leave this plane, stays behind and it goes with you for your judgment. It's divided. One part stays, and one part goes. Because when you die, and you've seen people die, ah, this guy was, you know, he was a stand-up guy. Or this guy was not a stand-up guy. 
Right. It was you judged him on his character. You understand? It's the same way God. You, we believe it's the same way God will. It's the same way. Compared in a sense, like the hard drive of a computer, everything is stored there. Character is above all things. It's what it's surround. It, it's what creates the energy around you. And you notice when people walk in a room, and all of a sudden you see that person, and the energy they give off. You haven't. You don't even know them, but they. There's an energy that is either good or bad. Right. And generally, it's their character that brings that energy out. In our religion, we truly believe that it's really based on who we are as a person and what our character did. And I just think that it doesn't matter what religion you are or what culture. Your religious you practice means nothing. It means nothing to you. Can, you can be in a temple and follow all the protocols and doctrines of, of a religion while you're inside the temple. But do you follow through? Yeah, when you're out. When you're out? Right. That's the difference. Like, that's the first thing. And I literally do this every day, 6 a.m. I'm up. I'm praying to this for patience for the day because I know, like, probably one of the things that I lack the most is patience. I think in our world, especially in what we do for a living, it's go, go, go. And I think sometimes that go, go, go might affect us in other aspects of our life. So I pray for patience. But surrender is not an option. If you surrender, you lose. And this life is about perseverance. Continue, continue, continue. If one door doesn't open, the next one will. But you continue. Thank you. And I can't thank you enough for coming here and being a part of this. I've never really invited anybody here to do this, but I consider you to be a brother. We've been working together for a while. And uh, let's do it, bro. Nice. To the moon, baby. To the moon. Hey. <laughs> and that means our spiritual community, how everything is connected. All of us that are here are connected, whether we realize that or not. We choose our destiny. In our destiny, it was meant for this moment right now in time to happen. Egbe is our spiritual double. If we, we say in Ifa that when we come into the world, into our mother's womb, a part of us stays in heaven, which is called Egbe. And they are the ones that advocate for us and pray for us also. Please help David, pray for David. It's always looking out for you. It's that spiritual double like this, and it will sit here like this. We're just OT. Just poor OT now. Three days. Yes. yes. And then I can put it back where it goes. Where it goes. Okay. It'll be on the side. We all have a side that we like to sleep on. It'll be on that side on the floor. Okay, awesome. Okay? Araba, thank you so much for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, thank you. and so happy you guys came and that your journey to Nigeria will be a blessed one. You'll go with blessings and return with blessings. You taught me so much today. Yeah. Thank you.